Hi, welcome back to a new tutorial in the Unreal Engine 4. Today we'll be kicking off the festive season by exploding boxes. And I know what you're thinking, that's not very festive and it actually isn't at all. But we'll be doing it anyway, so I hope you enjoy the video. So to start, just click the content folder here, just click this content name, and it'll bring up these three subfolders, because what we're going to do is going to explode one of these cubes. So just go to Geometry, Meshes, and you'll see this one meter cube right here. Now, let's just right click that and you'll see the very aptly named Create Destructible Mesh. And as you'll see, this cube is now in this 3D space and it's just compiling the shaders. And here we get to destroy the cube. Very simple, very well done. And this is literally the most there is to it. This is using the inner engine destructible. You can create your own in 3DS software, obviously, but we'll be using this and this is primarily what you'd use for your big collisions anyway. So, to go over a few of the basic settings here, cell site count states how many pieces you can break this cube into, so if you want to go really over the top, just set this to a thousand. Fracture our mesh, and once it's done calculating, boom, your one meter cube explodes into a thousand pieces. Bit over the top for a cube, but maybe you want to just make a physics simulator and you'd want to do that, I don't know. However, the default, as you saw, was about 25, which is what I'd go for in the range of 20 to 30, as it explodes it into big enough pieces that you wouldn't even be able to remember that was a box. So this tab at the top also just likes to explode it outwards and just see what the finished fracture looks like. Random seed, if you place any number in here, it will multiply the cell fracture algorithm behind it by this random seed so that when you fracture this mesh boom you've got a completely different looking fracture than what we have at zero so that's a way to get a few different types now for the actual variables it's self damage threshold will leave at one damage spread will leave at 0.1 so threshold is how much damage it needs to break and then damage spread is how far that damage spreads along the cube itself, the surface area the damage affects. And then impact damage is things like thing, bullets hitting the cube, or players walking into the cube, the cube rolling off a table, all these sorts of things that you'll probably actually want to be able to break your mesh. So now we've got those impact damage, we're just going to leave it at 0.1. And we're just going to go to the bottom here where we see skeletal mesh. And you see we've got two materials now. The original cube only has one. And as you can see in the original cube material, like this one we still have selected, it's got this cube material set. And then in this next one, we've got world grid material. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to my first person projectile material. And now when we fracture that mesh, as you can see, the inside of the cube is now yellow, or orange, or whatever that color is. So what that second material is, is the material for the newly created chunks. And that is how you get your broken brick looking on the inside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to save that. Okay, so now you've gone ahead and saved that material, we're now able to just drop this in and place it into our level and we have our cube. And I would say as this is just a standard cube, you can scale it up to any size you want and it'll still have that destructible property. Just know that the chunks will also be a lot bigger obviously as well. It's going to scale along with the cube. Now to do one more thing, to be actually able to break the damage of our bullets, you want to go to your first person projectile blueprints in your blueprints folder, just open that up and there's just a quick thing we need to do on collision component here. Click simulate physics. You can get a mass if you'd like, but we're just going to leave it as default. And then you also need to change its collision preset to physics actor because it's now an actor of physics. And the sphere you want to set to block all because that is now going to be the thing that's impacting with the world. Now when we hit play and we load our level and we shoot our cube, as you can see, it explodes into many pieces. But, it doesn't move along the ground when we walk into it, or when we shoot it. Except every now and then, like, what happened then. So to stop that from 
freezing. You just need to go to the mesh itself here and click simulate physics as well. Play and then, oh, that just exploded. We're able to push and shoot all these pieces around of our fractured mesh. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you're able to create something fantastic with this new exploding box. Okay, it's not very interesting, but it gives you the basics of how you would explode your own assets in your game. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, a dislike if you didn't. If your opinions are complicated, or you have any questions, suggestions, or advice, I just want to leave a general comment, say hello, just leave in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Again, there's always Twitter you can hit me up on, which is at Sam underscore BA underscore Jones 97. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks, guys. Bye.